What is up, Need for Speed Racers? It is I, your wheelman, Alex Cornut. We're here today with the Buick Grand National GNX in S-Class. Viewer requested, Cornut delivered. You guys have been asking for it, so here it is, as promised. It's not as bad as I thought it was going to be. I really was putting this on par with the Hellcat. It's actually a lot better than I expected. Caught me off guard when I was doing some of the gameplay and running around. I've got four gameplay footage videos at the end of this. Clips are pretty solid, you guys. I win pretty handily in those races. And so overall, I think if you're looking for an off-meta pub stomper, this will probably do okay. Mind you, you got to work for it. You got to have a good driver mod, but it'll get it done. Viewer requested means you guys voted on this. The way it works is you drop a comment on this video down below on what you want to see next. Whatever comment gets the most likes is the build that I will bring you next. So help me help you help the community by you telling me what you want to see because I'm happy to deliver and honestly why not let the best builders in the game bring you the cars that you want to see so at least you know they're optimized. That's what we do out here. Overall, the Grand National gets it done. So. Drop a comment, and my rule is, whatever comment you leave, you have to like somebody else's comment, so that way we're spreading the love down there. And while we're commenting and liking down here on the video, go ahead and like the video while you're at it, so that way it helps me out. I would appreciate it. Guys, I'm growing, and it's all thanks to you. I'm one of the only Need for Speed creators that's making content for you every day of the week, Monday through Friday, so that way you've got new builds to go and play with. And I'm happy to do it, so thank you guys for supporting me and helping me with that. Let's dig into the build. The engine that you are running in this is the stock motor. It is the 3.8 liter V6, 304 brake horsepower when we start. It is the third motor over, so we count one, two, three. Guys, I bought all of them. I tuned up all of them. This one is by far and away the most horsepower and torque by like 200 horsepower and like 400 foot pounds of torque. I mean, you'll see that those are four, fives and sixes and we're at like 1089 on the torque. So it'll hook it up. For the parts, you are running super gold induction. You are running elite platinum ECU. Elite platinum fuel system. Super gold exhaust. Elite platinum screw supercharger. And then you are running Sport Bronze Nitrous. Elite Platinum Road Suspension. Iron Basic Brakes. Elite Platinum Grip Tires. Sport Bronze Clutch. Sport Bronze 5 Speed Transmission. So don't get confused, guys. There are two bronze transmission. Just make sure you get the five speed. It really does matter. Um, actually, the four speed brings it up in PI value because you get a lower zero to 60. The lower zero to 60 is because first gear now takes you all the way to 60 mile an hour. So there's no shift. So the way the game calculates that, it's going to say, oh, it's better zero to 60, higher PI value. No, 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 no. Four speed, garbo. Five speed, tolerable. I tested it. Trust me. So, get away from the stats, you guys. That's why I say 0 to 60 doesn't matter, because it doesn't. That's why I say quarter mile doesn't matter, because it doesn't. The more you know. Elite Platinum Differential. And the auxiliary is Nitrous Drift, Nitrous Grip. For the handling, slide that slider as far to the left, as much Beyonce as we can squeak out of it. To the left, to the left. 60% grip. Steering sensitivity, I run two clicks high. You guys do whatever you want there. Downforce, if you go all the way low and then back it off one, that is S329. I take it as far into the low range as I can so that way it has the most opportunity on the top end because this car just doesn't love like 170 to 195 is a little slow. I mean, it, it gets there, but some boost really helps out. <laughs> Traction control off, drift entry is brake tap. That's going to give you the Buick Grand National GNX S329, top speed 192. With Redline Tech, it'll do like 198, 199 pretty easy. I've seen 200 a couple times, but you've got to really be good on the trigger to get there. 867 for the horsepower and 1089 for the torque. This thing is a banger. It'll get it done. 
Stay tuned for the gameplay footage. We've got four clips for you. Shows this car doing all kinds of crazy stuff. It's all right. I'll probably keep it in the garage just to race on stream, but you're not setting any records in this thing. But it's a lot better than a lot of the other cars you guys have had me build, so there's that. Drop a comment down below what you want to see. Like the video while you're at it, and please subscribe to the channel if you have not. I just hit 4K subs. You guys are helping me grow. I am so thankful for that, and we're just going to keep this train rolling. So stay tuned. We've got more coming for you. Have a great rest of your day. Bye-bye. We're going to open up with Blue Collar. Everybody knows that track. If you don't get good scrub, you guys should know this one. Uh, it's a very popular track. It's a very good one to set times on because it requires you to have your Tron turns, your micro drifts, and everything else in between. We launch in fourth gear. It's got a pretty good launch. We're running, you know, four other guys here, so it'll give you a chance to see. We walk that skyline, no problem. So having that uh, thousand foot pounds of torque definitely doesn't hurt. We get a little tight micro drift in there. I e brake entry because the car doesn't always like to settle, and then just use that boost to get up to speed. We've got the two bar. I'm waiting until I clear that section before I use it, and then I use that to go around the corner. The car did not grip turn well like I would have liked, so I had to kind of get on the brakes and get out of the throttle to make the corner good. Slow and steady wins the race here, you guys, so as long as you're making the lines as clean as you can, that's going to be better for you than if you just go full bore and then go off the track. That's one of the big mistakes that hurt our time right here. I didn't Tron turn that correctly. We lose some speed, we lose some boost, and I don't chain it through, so that's worth about three or four seconds. Pretty easy, just that little mistake. But overall, we're still well in front of our opponents we micro drift through here to get that three bar use it immediately to try to get back up to speed and start clawing back at that gap we had two bar into that now we're going to click into fifth as we go up the hill here fifth is a little low for this spot but at fourth i bounced off the rev limiter a couple times when i was running this track so really it's like pick your poison fifth's a little nicer i guess so I'll save the bar until we hit the tarmac and then use that to get a good grip turn, get back up to speed. Little micro drift here. And that's just a single tap on the trigger and then just let the car slide, but not fully drift out is what that is. That's another mistake back there, you guys. I didn't carry any boost into this corner and that's kind of how you chain these corners together is you boost into another boost into a grip turn and it allows you to get three bar after three bar. So you'll see a couple of these do hook up. And so you saw the three bar get used there and we immediately have another one. And so you kind of just chain each corner together and carry a lot of momentum and that works. This is a really risky Tron turn, but we send it anyway. The car hooks up, gets a little sideways, loses a lot of momentum, almost go into the woods. But overall, the Grand National is going to come in at a 210 with some serious mistakes. I really think you could probably do 205 or better in this car, especially if you don't make any mistakes. But really, like, it's not bad. And that's what I want to show you guys. Like, I'm a lot slower in other cars, that's for sure. So, it gets it done. Plenty enough to beat a GTR and a couple of Pistas and a Carrera. So, that's no problem. Get high tonight. This track's got a couple of pretty unique corners. Uh, some D-Gen lines you can hit. And I hit them. So, let's uh, see what we got here. Same lobby as before. Same playlist, actually. So, it's the same guys. I think they were wanting a piece, but we really don't see a whole lot of it. We launch in fourth, uh, piece to driver, didn't get his start, didn't get a super start at all, so that's a bummer for him. You'll see that I start chaining the boost immediately. We're getting a micro drift there, but it kicks out too far, so it becomes a full drift, and we don't get a grip turn from it. That's one of the risks with this car, especially with the 60% drift, is sometimes it'll just kick out further than a micro, and it doesn't register the grip turn, and then you're kind of sunk. You see me do a little snake action there to try to keep the boost up. We Tron turn, go to the right of the tree, cut a straight line down through there, and now we're gaining. We're, we're going quite fast. Now, through here, I could have tried to save the three boost all the way to this corner, but I was going slow enough that I really wanted to just get that speed up. Ideally, you come in here with some boost and you hit that corner and hit the boost right over the top, but that's not too bad. Definitely not optimal, but with this car, there's only so much you've got to work with. Get a nice grip turn there. I'm going to chain that into a three bar with a micro drift and then use it immediately. Car slides out a little bit. That's that 60% grip biting me in the butt again. But as we come down the hill, 
We're using our boost, using our nitrous right here. We're going to get it up to at least two bars, and then we use it. Use all the NOS, because we're hitting the gas station, top it up, and then use that whole tank again to get up to speed. Finally, we're carrying enough speed to actually do something. As we come around this corner, always be looking for traffic. That truck was kind of hidden in the shadow, so keep sharp eyes when you're doing that, you guys. If you can land on the tarmac and kind of line those two checkpoints up like that, that's definitely the move. I get a micro drift there. I'm going to get a near miss on the parked car. I'm going to get a near miss on this car if I could, but I went wider just to be safe. Avoid the pillar and then use the three bar to get out. Because I got in the grass, we kind of slid a little bit, lost a lot of our momentum. But overall, guys, we are 1,300 yards ahead of some guys. 1,200 yards, the other guys. Like, we've really walked out a crazy lead, and this isn't a super meta car or anything. So, by all means, if you guys have got a decent driver mod, uh, go slay some pub lobbies and show them that uh, we've got the Grand National over here on the Core Nug crew. 159.69. Nice. On rails, a very fun track. Out of the gate, this car would not typically do so good on this track because the top speed isn't really there, but hey, whatever. We've got a different playlist, we've got different opponents this time, we've got ourselves a Vulcan, we've got ourselves a Pista. Nil Kappa is back there in a Golf GTI, so we gotta get away from him before he catches up because that thing is an alien car. We're gonna draft as long as we can to build up that bar. Get near misses with the parked cars. That's a great trick, you guys. Definitely be utilizing that. Look at those parked cars as a way to get that boost up. And you'll see I'm just weaving back and forth to get that three bar so I can hang a nice, tight corner there and stay on the sidewalk and not go up into the grass. That allows us to immediately put a gap on pretty much everybody behind us. We're at 100 yards now for the most part. Gonna use that boost right there when we're safe to make sure we can exit the corner and just use all the resources and all the NOS to get the speed. Get a bit of a near miss, get a nice long grip corner. I'm trying to chain that three boost up and cap it right there on the inside to make sure we make the corner smooth. Overall, you guys, this car is predictable if you know kind of what to look for and you know the signs when the car starts to step out. But you'll see that I'm really utilizing my resource and my boost to its fullest. I definitely am not using it on corner entry, I'm using it on corner exit. And I try to stretch that yellow bar as long as I can to make sure that I get the most out of it. But overall, this is a pretty short track and we get every bit of 350 yards on our opponents here, if not more on some of them. So, pretty good. You'll see 197 there on the speedometer, so with a little red line tech, it'll do much better than the 192 that it says. And that'll give us a 123, and that's that's not meta, like that's 9 seconds off of pace, but it's still 3 seconds faster than the guy in the Vulcan, and faster than a lot of the guys behind us after that. So really guys, get your driver mod up, and then you can play in goofy cars like this one. Riding the L. This will be the last race of the playlist that I show you guys. This track's pretty technical. I don't do a perfect run by any means, but I want you guys to see that it don't, you don't have to have long flowy turns for this car to be decent. You can have 90 degree sharp ones too, and as long as you're setting up for them, it'll work. We launch it forth, get as good a, a launch as we possibly can, and then set up for this corner. I set up wide and start to micro drift, but we catch the curb on the inside right there, and it throws the car into a bit of a drift, and we're not able to keep that micro drift flowing out. So, we use our boost around the corner to a grip turn, and then we use the boost around the corner to a grip turn. Chain it in there, car gets loose, hit the wall, a little bit of a bummer there. But we just stay in fourth gear because we know we were going to hit that yellow boost immediately. And I'm brake tapping, you'll see that I'm kind of tapping the brakes to try to settle the car through that zone. And just using the boost and the nitrous to get right back up to speed once we clear the technical section. Get a nice micro drift out of that. We're staying in fourth. We're coming around, and I just eat crap and die into that car. Once you've set your turn and you begin to turn in, there's not a lot of wiggle room with this car, and so that was that. Like I had already kind of committed to that corner line, and that piece of traffic was just there waiting for us. But even with that crash, we're still ahead of our opponents. So like, it's all good. But what I want you to see is the way this car can take these big, sharp corners and still stay in pretty good shape. We're in a third right now. We wait till we're around the corner and then hit the boost. That's what I want you guys to see is I'm using that boost on exit, not on entry. 
So that way I know the car is planted, I know where I'm going, and so it's really a very point and shoot situation. I wait till I, after I bounce off the wall and then accelerate and get a couple of near misses there. Try to get a little bit of a micro drift. It doesn't happen so much. Try to get another one here and then use it because the finish line's right there. This isn't any kind of crazy time or anything, but it does show you that if you guys are working on your lines and you're working on car control, you can take something that is middle of the road like the Grand National and make it perform very well. Guys, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to comment on what you want to see next and go like a few comments while you're down there. Like the video as well, please. Have a great rest of your day. Bye-bye.